Hello everyone. Today we will be discussing a clinical case of splenomegaly. In this, we will be discussing how to take a clinical history, what are the physical signs, what are the types of the viva questions, how to make a diagnosis and investigation. In the clinical history, the first history or the history of presenting complaint we will be asking is directly related to the splenomegaly. And the most common symptom directly related to the splenomegaly is the pain, pain or discomfort in the left upper quadrant of the abdomen. And as well as feeling of uh, early feeling. Also, we will be asking uh, points uh, uh, which uh, will help us in making a etiological diagnosis of the splenomegaly. So, any history should focus on uh, the points key that will give us a clue. Like uh, if a patient complained of fatigue, this will be because of anemia. Patient complained of fever, so there will be infectious etiologies, can be leukemias, lymphoma or maybe some autoimmune disorders. Bone pain points towards the myeloproliferative disorders due to marrow infiltration. Hematemesis points towards the etiology of portal hypertension. So these will be the points which we will be asking in the present history. Then past history, patient must have record of a lymphoma or leukemias. Personal history points towards the alcohol. Alcohol means ki it might be causing a chronic liver disease, cirrhosis and portal hypertension. Family history. Family history will be a family history of some congenital or hereditary uh, disorders. As well as residence of because that will give us a clue that uh, Kalazar will be endemic in certain areas uh, like uh, eastern part of our uh, country. Then on the general physical examination, the uh, important points that we will be looking for is pallor. Of course, anemia, lymphoma, leukemia can cause uh, anemia. So pallor will be looked for. Uh, lymph nodes, uh, uh, they will be present in cases of lymphoma, leukemia, connective tissue disorders like SLE. It can be a viral infection like infectious mononucleosis or sarcoidosis. While Hemolytic anemia do cause splenomegaly, so we will be looking for the, some uh, bone changes. In the eyes, uh, uveitis will be present if it is a case of uh, uh, sarcoidosis. Ictrus for cirrhosis. Signs of chronic liver uh, uh, failure will be looked for like spider nevi, deputrine contractures, ascites. Shin area should be looked for erythema nodosum, which is present in sarcoidosis. Skin pigmentation should be uh, looked for, uh, especially in cases of Kalazar patients. Spleen examination. So, spleen examination mainly consists of palpation, which is a bimanual palpation and Middleton manure. Uh, these examination we have discussed in the previous video. So you can uh, watch the previous video ki how to palpate the spleen and how to do percussion of the spleen. Now other system examination will be done. For example, cardiovascular system. Why cardiovascular system for a case of a sarcoidosis? Lungs examination again for a case of sarcoidosis, we might get some finding in the lungs. Now the diagnosis. Based on the clinical history and examination, uh, we should go systematically about the diagnosis. We will not uh, straight away say ki it is a case of a Kalazar, it is a case of a portal hypertension. No. The first point in the diagnosis is always what is the lesion. So we will say splenomegaly is present or we can say a mass in the left upper quadrant is present and it is uh, uh, say uh, 10 centimeter, 8 centimeter or whatever is uh, uh, the size of that mass below the left costal margin. Then. The next point will be what is the etiological diagnosis. So in the etiological diagnosis, we need the investigations. But before the investigation, we can tell the differential diagnosis of the etiological diagnosis based on our uh, examination finding. If we get a, a chronic liver failure signs, uh, we will say that uh, the etiology can be a portal hypertension. If we get the clinical signs of sarcoidosis, 
then we'll say the differential diagnosis is sarcoidosis. So we should at least give three or four differential diagnosis based on the clinical examination only. Then uh, the third point is how the patient is getting affected, whether there is any complications of splenomegaly or what is the functional status. Like if a patient has anemia, so patient is uh, dyslic because of the anemia. A uh, patient might have some bleeding tendency due to uh, low platelet count due to splenomegaly. So these are the complications of the uh, splenomegaly which can occur. So we will mention whether uh, these complications are present or absent. Now, some of the important viva questions. Uh, how much spleen should be enlarged to get palpable? So answer is it should be at least two or three times it's a normal size that it can be palpable. So even a spleen tip is palpable that means it is enlarged. Reason the spleen usually enlarged in the posterior direction first then it come anteriorly and then will be palpable. Second viva question is uh, why this mass is spleen and not left kidney? So you have to justify your finding ki why you are saying that it is a case of a splenomegaly. Uh, because in the left upper quadrant, uh, kidney can be palpable like autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease. So, uh, the, this mass is spleen because it is in a left hypochondrium, the first point. Second point, it moves with the respiration downward and towards the right dialect fossa. That will support the diagnosis of a spleen. We can't get above the swelling and fingers uh, can't be insulated between the mass and the left lower rib. And there is a splenic notch. So this will be a definitive sign, a presence of a splenic notch. So with this, uh, we will say, he, yes, we can justify that it, uh, this left upper quadrant mass is spleen and not kidney. These are the other differences between the spleen and the kidney. Like spleen is palpable in a right hypochondrium to be precise, while kidney is palpable in the lumbar area. Uh, spleen has a, a well-defined medial border while kidneys are rounded, uh, notch is present, it will support a diagnosis of spleen, notch will be absent in cases of kidney. While we can't get between the mass and the left costal margin in splenomegaly, while we can get between the mass and the costal margin if it is kidney. Uh, dullness over the mass, while there can be a colonic resonance over the mass in cases of kidney. Then next question will come, okay, uh, what will be the differential diagnosis of uh, mass in the left uh, hypochondrium? So other uh, organs which can be palpable besides the spleen and the kidney are carcinoma of the colon, left hepatic flexure. It can be a carcinoma of the stomach in the greater curvature or it can be a carcinoma of the tail of the pancreas. So other differential diagnosis of mass in left hypochondrium. Commental mass can also be there. Now, how will you classify a spleen enlargement depending on the size below the costal margin? So, mild splenomegaly is 4 cm below the costal margin. Between 4 to 8 is moderate and a massive splenomegaly is more than 8 cm below the costal margin. Now, what are the causes of the splenomegaly? So we can classify those into four groups key how the splenomegaly uh, is uh, present. So the first cause is increased demand for a splenic functions. Increased demand like when it is a hemolytic anemia or if it is a immune uh, dysregulation or immune mechanism which has caused the spleen to enlarge. Uh, second can be a congestion of the spleen because of the increased portal blood flow like in a portal hypertension. It can be an infiltration of the spleen or it can be some unknown mechanism. So if we tell the examiner in these points, uh, even though we are not able to recall all the etiologies, then we are through. So what are the causes of increased demand for spleening functions? So it can be a, a reticuloendothelial system hyperplasia for removal of defective RBCs like uh, in hemolytic anemias. It could be a immune hyperplasia in infections. These infections can be malaria, tuberculosis, infectious mononucleosis, HIV infection. So the list is long. Uh, Kala Hazar, yes, uh, immune hyperplasia occur there. Or it could be a disordered immunoregulation, which can be seen in SLE or uh, sarcoidosis. Or it can be an extra medullary uh, hematopoiesis. 
which is seen in cases of myelofibrosis and leukemias. While uh, abnormal spleen or portal blood flow is of course cirrhosis and portal hypertension. Infiltration, infiltration by amyloid, leukemias, lymphoma, Gaucher's disease are the important causes. Now, what are the causes of massive splenomegaly when the spleen is more than 8 cm below the costal margin? So these include the fixed uh, differential diagnosis, uh, chronic myeloid leukemia, chronic lymphoid leukemias, lymphomas, hairy cell leukemia, Gaucher's disease, sarcoidosis, important cause. It can be seen in myelofibrosis, autoimmune hemolytic anemias, polycythemia vera, and diffuse splenic hemangiomatosis. So these are the 10 causes of massive splenomegaly. What are the causes of fever with splenomegaly? Because we have asked the history of the fever. So patient come with fever and spleen is enlarged. So these will be typhoid fever. Usually after uh, the, uh, uh, in the second week, the splenomegaly is palpable in enteric fever. Malaria, like a tropical splenomegaly syndrome is there. Uh, the is like Kalazar, subacute bacterial endocarditis, again uh, in the second week uh, spleen is enlarged due to immune mechanisms, viral infections, lymphoma, leukemia and autoimmune disorders, brucellosis, toxoplasmosis. So this is all the differential diagnosis uh, but the advice is you should always start with the common causes like enteric fever and malaria. Do not start with brucellosis and toxoplasmosis first and of course disseminated tuberculosis. Now for the lymph nodes were palpable along with the splenomegaly. So what could be the cause? It could be a lymphoma, leukemia, viral infections, collagen disorders, Kalazar, and brucellosis sarcoidosis or disseminated tuberculosis. So lymph adenopathy will be present in all these conditions. Important viva question. What are the causes of splenomegaly with ascites? It will be seen. The first answer will be cirrhosis with portal hypertension. Can be seen in SLE where ascites is present. In lymphomas and leukemia, it might be present. And of course, disseminated tuberculosis. Now, the consistency of the spleen, uh, whether it is a soft spleen or a, or a firm spleen or a hard spleen. Soft spleen means ki it looks like a, a relaxing muscle. Uh, when you touch a relaxing muscle, then it is a soft. So enteric fever, subacute bacterial endocarditis and viral infections. While firm spleen, like a contracted muscle, it will be seen in uh, cirrhosis, uh, CML case. While a hard spleen like a, a, like a bone, it will be seen in cases of malaria and kala azar. Now, an uh, important question, what is hypersplenism? So, hypersplenism means splenomegaly is present and the functions of the spleen is increased in terms of a reduction of one or more blood cells. It can be a bicytopenia or can be a pancytopenia. Normal or hyperplastic bone marrow will be seen. No bone marrow failure is uh, present and there is an improvement in blood picture after the spleen removal. Uh, what is tropical splenomegaly syndrome important for Indian point of view? So tropical splenomegaly syndrome is basically an exaggerated immune response to repeated malarial infections. Uh, in which uh, splenomegaly will be more than 10 cm in size, a major criteria, IgM levels are increased. Uh, elevation, clinical and immunological response to anti-malarial therapy. Indeed, splenomegaly regress after six months of the therapy by uh, uh, more than 40%. This is a tropical splenomegaly syndrome. And antibody levels of plasmodium species will be present. Now, in the lab investigation, the lab investigation, uh, two important lab investigation are uh, needed. One is a, a hemogram and second is ultrasound. And rest of the investigation depend on the uh, etiologies that we are suspecting. So, lab investigation, hemogram like ESR. ESR can be normal or ESR can be decreased. The causes of decreased ESR can be uh, or hemolytic anemias, can be uh, cirrhosis or portal hypertension. It can be increased in polycythemia. While granulocyte count, it can be normal or it can be decreased. Decreased granulocyte count, neutrophil count is a 
peculiarly seen in Felty syndrome, which is associated with rheumatoid arthritis. Increased in cases of uh, infections or some myeloproliferative disorders. Uh, platelet count, it can be normal or it can be decreased. Decreased is more common because of the spleen uh, destroy the platelets. Spleen destroy the platelets. It can be increased in cases of myeloproliferative disorders like polycythemia bear. So these are the uh, investigation, the basic investigation that we will be doing and rest of the investigation depend on the etiologies of the splenomegaly. Hopefully, uh, you like this uh, discussion of the splenomegaly, especially the viva questions. So if you have any questions, you can put your questions under this comment section of this video. Thank you, all of you.